Hi, this is Karen with Mama Scrapbooks, and today I'm going to show you, as promised, how to do some stitching on paper. Uh, right now you're looking at a, a kit that I've put together that I have available. I actually have three of them. Um, it's a paper mache box with butterflies that you can use as a sewing box. And inside I've included the things that you're going to need in order to get started doing your paper stitching. Um, inside it I have a uh, needle threader and 25 needles uh, that are hand needles. Uh, I'll show you how to use this. This is actually two pieces of foam that you'll um, end up using. Uh, four skeins of DMC floss. I have kind of an ecru color and then a rose, kind of a soldier blue and a lime green. I thought if you wanted to do flowers, you would actually have everything you needed to do those. And a paper piercer. Now with this, you'll also get um, three full pages of stitching instructions with uh, 15 different um, stitches that you can actually do on your paper. So, I've got a few things here that I want to show you that um, if you don't have a paper piercer, but you do happen to have um, a needle point needle or a darning needle, you can actually use that as a paper piercer. Um, this, I worked in a scrapbook store and I got this. It's actually made by Basil. It is specifically to use for stitching as your foam underneath you when you're piercing your paper. Um, it's called In Stitches by Basil. You could Google that and find out if those are still out there. This is um, Fun Foam. And this is what I usually use just because it's handy. I got this out at Michael's. Hobby Lobby also has it. Um, and I'll show you how we're going to use that foam. You could also use a mouse pad if you have mouse pad around to uh, put underneath your paper. This is a magazine, well actually it's a book volume 2, it's called In Stitches by Basil. It um, is full of examples of layouts where people have actually stitched, so it's a great idea book. Um, I paid uh, $12.99 for that, so you might want to Google that and see if you can find it. Um, Basil also has several different stencils out there. This one I got at my local scrapbook store and it's a flower. You could use just the border or just one of the flowers or just the card center or, or the uh, flower center if you were making cards. Um, so you don't have to use the whole 8x8 eight eight flower. You can use um, parts that elements of it. I paid $4.99 for that. If you have a friend that quilt or you quilt yourself. Um, all the quilt stores actually sell um, stencils. This one was $1.55 at my local um, quilting store and so I can use that to actually use as a guide. This is a paper piercer that I've had forever. So I'll show you real quick how to use something like a stencil like this. On the basil one, of course, it's already got a pre predetermined holes in it, so it's easy to use to align it. On this, a regular stencil in the regular stencil department, like at the craft stores, or even the quilting stencils, you want to poke your holes approximately every fourth inch, just enough to, you know, follow your pattern. I have a six-year-old, and she has tons of coloring books. You can use any coloring book design as a pattern. Just simply lay your coloring book design on top of your paper and um, follow it every fourth inch. This is probably my favorite stencil, and I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. It's um, called Easy Stitches. It was uh, $4.99. It's made by uh, Hot Off the Press, and it's called Paper Pizzazz. And I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can. It's gridded off. It has every kind of stitch ima imaginable. It's got cross stitch, blanket stitch, zigzags, all kinds of fancy stitches. 
and it's well worth spending the five bucks on that because you can use that on any layout. Um, okay, so let's get started real quick. You're going to put your foam down first, your paper, and we followed the pattern of the wing on the uh, uh, dragonfly. I've got several colors of DMC floss here. Um, you're going to need a needle, and I use um, two strands of the uh, DMC floss. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to pull probably oh 12 to I'd say 12 to 18 inches of your of your um, thread out. You'll need a pair of scissors. Cut that. Those are not good scissors, obviously. Each strand is made up of six little threads. So you're going to take two of them and separate them from the rest of the crown. And those are the two strands that you're going to actually do your stitching with. Now you can, and I have seen, people use all six um, strands. And what happens is you get more bulk in your stitches. So this is my four piece strand. I'm going to set that aside. I can use that for my next, next time I'm going to load up my needle here. This is a two strand and for time's sake I went ahead and used my needle threader and threaded my needle. So basically you're going to have a long tail and a short tail. And you're going to hang on to that. And I want to show you how to do a uh, uh, simple back stitch. This is the front of my pattern. I'm going to take it on the back and I'm going to go up through the first hole. Now with fabric you're going to, you know, have all these knots and everything. With paper you're going to take a piece of scotch tape and you can just tape that down. You don't have to do any any knots at all. It's very simple. So I've come up through the back, I've taped my fat, my uh, thread down, and I'm going to go in to my first hole, my second hole actually, then I'm going to turn it over, find my next hole, go up through the paper, from the back to the front, and I'm going to do, do a simple back stitch. So I'm coming out of this hole, I'm going to go back through the hole that I previously stitched in. Then I'm going to go to my next hole, up through the back, and back stitch. That's a simple back stitch design, or stitch. Um, one thing that I've learned in stitching, when you work with an entire 12 by 12 piece of paper for your entire layout, um, you don't want to worry about having to uh, stitch, you know, using a 12 by 12 piece of paper. It's it's more manageable if you do your designs on a smaller piece of paper. That way you can take it with you. It's just a lot easier to work with a smaller piece of paper. This is a 6 by 6. So that's a simple back stitch. Now, if I wanted to do uh, any of these other designs with my other stencils, I would simply take my paper and I would poke the holes where I would want them. Now remember with with paper it's unforgiving. If you um, put a hole in your paper, there's a hole in your paper. With fabric it's going to self heal. You can pull it back out. Not with paper. It's pretty unforgiving. So let's see. Right there I've just put Right now it just looks like holes, but you know it's going to be a cross stitch because your pattern's giving you that idea. And you're just going to stitch up from the back and to the sides and make your X's. It's very simple. One other th real quick thing I want to show you is I have these big punches and everybody loves flowers. You can actually do your own paper applique. Where did my poker go? There it is. Okay, and the way I would do that is I would put one hole on the on the pattern, one hole on my regular paper, one hole on my pattern, one on my paper. And what I would do is I would stitch from one to the next, go back under one to the next, 
and then I would have an uh, actual applique that I could do any design with whatever punches you have so um, I will be right back I'm going to show you a few more things uh, in part two and uh, so stay tuned this is Karen with Mama Scrapbooks <laughs> 